And uh, what we want to do is find, to practice here, the mean of the following data. 5, 7, 8, 10, 4, 3, 12. And so we want to find the mean of this guy. And these are presumably samples, right, because this is a very small amount here. So we will say that x bar, which is our sample mean, we're going to add all these guys up. 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 10 plus 4 plus 3 plus 12. And then after we get that, we're going to divide the whole thing by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 values here. Now, this is exactly what the sample mean says, right? We add up all of the values and we divide by the number of samples that we have. So that's exactly what we have done here. So when we do this, uh, what we're going to get is, on the top, you'll get 49 over 7. So x bar is 7. And this is what you would circle on your paper. So this is the sample mean of this set of samples here is going to be 7. Now, for the next problem, for the next problem, it's basically more of the same, just giving you a little more practice. Find the mean of the following baby weights. So baby birth weights, right? So we have 6.8, we have 9, 9.1, 8.7, 7.5, 8.2, 5.4, 6.5, 8.5, 7.3, 6.6, 5.9, 7.3, 9.3, 7.5, and 7.8. Now you notice I give you a lot of values uh, here, and that's on purpose. Uh, so what we're going to have is the sample mean. Uh, notice it would be very, very lengthy to write out 6.8 plus 9.1 plus 8.7 and do all, it would just go on and on and on and on and on. So we're going to use our little shorthand notation, which means the sum of the x values over n, which is the number. And so what I'm going to do, this is going to mean I'm going to add up all of these things. So if you go in a calculator and you add all these things together, all of them together, what you're going to get is 112.4. And then if you add these up, you're going to have uh, 15 samples. And so what you'll get is 7.49. That is the sample mean. So these calculations are not difficult. I know that you have... Um, already learned in a long time ago how to calculate the average value of something. It's not really a big deal, but it's still important for you to understand the difference between the population mean and the sample mean, uh, the symbols involved and things like that. Now one more thing I do want to show you before we close is something that you may or may not have seen before, and that's called a weighted mean. A weighted mean. That is something that you can see occasionally, especially when you calculate grades and things like that. So a weighted mean Let's write it down. Weighted mean. All right. And so what basically this is, it is a mean, but it is when each value of your, of your data set is not equally important. Right, so what do I mean by that? So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, you know, when we average grades in a classroom of students, right, typically we want to find the average value. Every student is equally important. Johnny's grade means the same as Sally's grade, which means the same as Bobby's grade. They are all equal students, so their grades all count for the same, so when we average them, every person's grade really has the same weight, is what it really means by that. It carries equal weight. But that's always not that's not always what you want to calculate. In many, many cases, you do want to have equal weighting when you're averaging your, your materials together, but sometimes you don't. Um, for instance, what if you have, uh, you know, in a college class or something, what if your homework only counts for like, you know, uh, 20%, what if your quiz counts for 30%, what if your final per exam counts for like 40%, then each of those grades are not an equal weight. So you can't just average them together to find out what your final grade is. You've got to take into account the different weightings of everything because that's what it is. I mean, it's a weighted average or a weighted mean. So the way that you calculate that is you just say that the weighted mean 
is equal to the sum, right? When you see the sigma all, you need to think as addition. It's the sum of the x values, those are the data values that you have, multiplied by their weights, I'll explain this in a minute, and you add all that stuff together and you divide by the sum of the weights, all right? So this, that's what this is basically. You know, normally for a regular mean, all we're doing is we're adding up the values and dividing by the number of values. But that's assuming that everything's equally weighted. Here, we're saying things are not equally weighted. So in this case, we're gonna take, you know, uh, your, grade, your grade on your final exam multiplied by a higher weight because it means more. And then we're gonna add to that the, your test, your homework grade with a lower weight and so on. We're going to keep multiplying the, the value times the weighting, the value times the weighting. We're going to sum that stuff together and then we're going to divide by the sum of the weights. And that is going to, to give you the weighted average. The easiest way to see how this works is with an example. Let's say in your class, your professor says that tests are 40% of your grade. Homework is 20% of your grade quiz is 10% of your grade, and the final exam is uh, 30, actually, 30% 30 of your grade. Now, first thing you want to do is just kind of take a look. 40 plus 10, uh, 40 plus 20 is 60, plus this is 70, plus this is 100. So when we add all these together, we get 100%. So that means that the sum of all these things do account for 100% of our grade. It's just that the tests, you know, like the little tests during the semester, count for the, the bulk of your grade. The final counts for a whopping 30% on one grade, on, on one exam. But the quizzes are really not important very much, and the homework is kind of important, but, you know, not as important as, as the other things. So how would you calculate uh, the following? Let's say, so let, this is the weighting, right? Now let's say that on my test, on my test, I earn a score of an 83. On my homework, I earn a score of 98. On my quiz, I earn a score of 90. And on my final exam, I do pretty good with an 87. Now, if I had just asked you before we started talking about the weighted mean, like if I cover this up, and I said, what is the mean of this stuff? Then you would take 83 plus 98 plus 90 plus 87, you would get that number, and then you would divide by four because there are four samples there. And you would get a, a mean, but that is assuming that everything here is equally important of equal weight. And here we've kind of shown that these weightings are nowhere close to the same. So this 83 is gonna really weigh heavily on the final grade. This 87 is gonna weigh very heavily on the final grade. I did fantastic in my quizzes and fantastic in my homework. Unfortunately, those are not weighted very heavily, so it's not gonna bring my grade up as much. So we have to calculate a weighted mean when we have different weights like this. So the way we do it, uh, in terms of math, the weighted mean for this problem is my first test, notice we go back to our equation, we're adding up the value times the weight, okay? So let's go ahead and put a parentheses here. And what we'll have is the value, which is 83, times the weight. Now it's 40%, but you should know by now, and if you don't know by now, I'll tell you. You almost never use percentages in calculations. Percentages are great, you know, to represent things and make it clear to understand, but it's 40%. You, want, you don't wanna multiply by 40. You almost never wanna actually multiply by the percentage. You wanna move the decimal point two places to make it a decimal and make it a 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is exactly the same as 40%. That's the weight that you wanna use. So if you ever find yourself multiplying by an actual percentage, you're probably doing something wrong. So then what I'm going to have is the next grade, which is a 98, uh, times its weight. Now we don't wanna use 20, we wanna use 0.2. I should say 0 0.20, that'll make it a little clearer for you. So this is 0 0.40 and 0 0.20, right? And then we're gonna to add to that the grade of a 90, and then we're gonna multiply that by 0 0.10. And then we're going to have the final grade, which is an 87.3. All right, so we're gonna see how we're doing. We're taking the value, we're multiplying the weight for every single value we have times its weight. And the sum here means we're adding up these little products here. And so we're adding everything up and then we have a division bar. That's what this line is. And on the bottom is the sum of the weights. 
the sum of the weights. The weights are given right here. So 0 0.40 plus 0 0.20 plus 0 0.10 plus 0 0.30. Okay? So what you're going to have on the top, when you take this times this and this times this and this times this and this times this and you add all of those things together, you're going to get 87.9. On the bottom, when you add these decimals together, you're going to get a 1. This shouldn't surprise you that they add up to 1 because the original percentages add up to 100%. So it's kind of like, in this case, the weights sum up to be, you know, a complete course grade, which is 1 uh, in this case, or 100% if you want to think about it in terms of percentages. So the weighted mean is just 87.9. That is how you calculate the weighted mean. This is in, you know, very useful in grades because a lot of times grades on different things matter differently. It also matters when you're calculating your grade point average you know, in college or even in high school because different courses count for different number of grade points. So you have to take that into account. It's kind of like a weighted average. Um, I, I think this example is pretty clear. I just want to point one thing out to you before I close it. You know, my job, I think, is to kind of teach you this stuff, but also kind of show you that it's not quite as uh, complicated as it looks at first. You know, I think most people would agree this equation looks kind of complicated at first glance until we do an example, and I think you can see that it's not complicated. But when you look at it, it looks complicated. All right. Notice that in a regular case, in a regular case whenever I am taking an average of like people's heights in a classroom where everyone's weight is equal, then in that case, in the regular case, see we were doing these before like with this right here, you know, if it were a regular number of like looking at people's heights in a room or something, we would just add everybody's height up and we would divide by, by this or this would be the shorthand way of looking at it. In that case, that original case, all of the weights of all of the people in that case are the same. So what would really happen is if we had a problem like that, then the weights here, right, the weights are basically going to be one. Because if I have a, a classroom full of people, everyone would have equal weights. So the weight of Johnny would just be one. The weight of Sally would also be one. The weight of Jennifer would be one. The weight of Jason would be one. Everyone's weights would be the same. So what I'm trying to say is if I, I can use this um, weighted average equation with everybody having equal weights, let's see what would it would look like. So if I had this, I would have every sample value multiplied by one, okay, so which really means it doesn't change the sample value at all. So on the top, what I would have is everybody's height times one, and I would be adding everybody's height together, right? Doesn't that look familiar? In the regular case, all I'm doing is adding everybody's height together. So when the weights are just one, it kind of reduces to this equation over here. On the bottom, the sum of the weights, what's that going to look like? If the sum of the weights and everybody's weight is one, what's that going to be? Well, if I just add everybody's weight together, uh, where everyone's weight is just one, then really all I've arrived at is the number of people in the room, right? So if I have five people in the room, everybody's weight is one. If I sum the weights together, I'm going to get five. That's five people. What I'm driving at here is this weighted mean equation really reduces to the regular way to find means if the weights of everybody are just one. If the weight of everybody is one, then on the bottom, I'm just going to get, when I add everybody's together, I'm going to get the number of people in the room, which is the sample size. And on the top, I'm just going to be multiplying the value times the weight, value times the weight, which is always 1. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just summing up the number, or I'm summing up the, the uh, values in my set. So in other words, when the weights are 1, I'm going to end up adding up the values of everybody and dividing by the number of people in the room, or the sample size. So the weighted mean is important for some applications, but it doesn't just come out of thin air. That's what I'm mostly trying to tell you. A lot of times students just read the book and they see equations popping out everywhere and they all look different and they all look like, you know, some smart guy like put it all together and just threw it in the book and said, hey, learn this stuff. I'm trying to give you a little bit of um, appreciation that this stuff doesn't just come out of thin air. These equations really are the same. It's just that most of the time when we calculate a sample mean or a population mean, all the weights of everybody are one. So we use the simplified formula. Then the off chance when you have to calculate a weighted mean, then there's the, the full blown, the full glorified version of the equation that we've been working with there.
So that's about all I want to say about that. So in this section, we have calculated a few means, very simple calculation. I know you've seen it before, but I wanted to segue into uh, weighted means to kind of show you uh, what that's all about and so that you can get some practice with that and also tie it back in and sort of get an appreciation that the weighted mean and the sample means they're not too far off if if all of well they're the same thing if all the weights are one and we talked about that as well i'm jason with mathtutordvd.com i hope you've enjoyed this lesson follow me on to the next uh, section where we're going to continue learning about calculating uh, values with our data sets learn anything at mathandscience.com